Cosmic inflation makes some pretty bold claims about the physics of the early universe. It claims to increase the volume of the universe by a factor of 10 to the power of 78 in a fraction of a second. This is pretty nuts. How the heck does one expand the universe by this huge amount in such a small amount of time? And why do most physicists believe it really happened? We know the universe is expanding and has been for its entire history. But this usual cosmic expansion is relatively slow. It's the incredible, exponentially accelerating expansion during inflation which makes this period of time so remarkable. As Carl Sagan once said, or extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. So since inflation is the leading paradigm for the early universe, there must be overwhelming evidence in its favor. Right? R right? Right? I, I didn't spend my PhD researching something that has no direct evidence. Actually, direct evidence for inflation can be a bit of a touchy subject due to previous claims of evidence turning out to be false. In 2014, a collaboration called BICEP2 announced they had detected a polarization pattern in the cosmic microwave background, which could have been caused by gravitational fluctuations, which themselves could have been caused by inflation. However, as is often the case in astronomy, it was actually space dust messing with the detections, and the result was soon retracted. However, such a detection would be a smoking gun for us to use as evidence for inflation, since these gravitational fluctuations are predicted by inflation. Despite the fact that it could be argued that there's little concrete evidence for inflation, the fact that it stood the test of time, and is still the leading theory after over 40 years, suggests it must have some merit. Many other theories have been suggested and then ruled out in this time, so inflation's stubbornness is certainly encouraging for its validity. Just because a theory has been around for a while doesn't mean it's definitely correct. Theories such as Flat Earth can attest to that. But for real science, there's usually a reason when a theory sticks around for so long. There are at least three reasons why inflation is still believed to be true, and these are the three classical problems of the hot Big Bang model of the universe, and inflation trades solving these three problems for one simple problem of explaining how on Earth inflation could happen. Not a trivial task, but one problem sounds better than three. These three problems are known as the horizon problem, the flatness problem, and the monopole problem. These were well-known problems with the hot Big Bang model, and in the ancient times of the 1980s, inflation was proposed as a solution to these three problems by the great Alexei Starobinsky, Andre Linde, and Alan Guth. The world was still a black and white film back then, but the idea of inflation persists. Here, we'll just talk about the horizon problem, but we also have videos about the other two problems if you want to hear us talk about those and how inflation solves them. I would also say that while these problems were the historical reason for the proposition of inflation, most researchers today don't spend their time thinking about how well inflation solves these problems. Rather, we find the fact that inflation provides a neat mechanism for seeding the structure of the universe to be a much more appealing reason to keep studying inflation. A video about that is on its way, or if you're further in the future, a link is in the description. Anyway, with all that said, back to the task at hand. What the heck is the horizon problem? It's often stated that the horizon problem is the task of explaining why the whole universe is the same temperature everywhere. Obviously, you might say, this is clearly not the case. Pick any two spots on Earth, and they probably aren't the same temperature, let alone thinking about other planets. I mean, empty space is freezing, and the sun is pretty hot, so this clearly isn't all the same temperature. More properly, the horizon problem is basically the fact that when we look out into the universe as far as we can, we see a faint radiation called the cosmic microwave background, or CMB, in every direction. And everywhere we look, this radiation is almost exactly the same temperature. This is pretty weird, because the whole CMB was released at the exact same time everywhere in the universe. And without inflation, the observable universe was too big to be in causal contact with itself, so parts of the CMB couldn't communicate with other parts to equilibrate to be the same temperature. It wasn't even close either. At the time it was released, the CMB should have been made up of about 450,000 causally disconnected patches. So the fact that we see a completely uniform temperature across the whole CMB is completely at odds with a universe without inflation. A period of inflation explains the uniform temperature of the CMB in a very neat way. By simply allowing the universe to be a lot smaller immediately after the Big Bang, giving it time to mix and equilibrate to a uniform temperature. It then expanded a huge amount and leaves us with a universe that looks like it shouldn't have been in causal contact, but actually it was because of inflation. If we measure the temperature of the whole CMB, we find almost exactly the same temperature everywhere about 2.7 Kelvin, and variations in the temperature are tiny across the whole CMB. At most, it fluctuates by about one part in 10,000. Without inflation, 
This is very surprising, because the universe was simply too big to have settled down to a uniform temperature by the time the CMB was released. Things that are different temperatures heat each other up and cool each other down when they're in contact with each other, and the universe was simply too big to have all been in contact to settle down to a uniform temperature. Imagine a hotter spot and a cooler spot, represented here by the red and blue dye. Without inflation, the universe was too big and didn't have time to mix to a stable temperature by the time the CMB was released. It would still look like this, blotchy and not uniform. It takes time and contact for things to become uniform, and here there just isn't time for that to happen by the time the CMB is released. However, inflation lets things start off much smaller than we thought, and on these small scales, the hot and cool patches mix and settle down to a uniform temperature, or colour here, much quicker, because they're so much smaller. Inflation then rapidly accelerates the expansion of the universe, leaving us with a patch that is much larger, but remains at a uniform temperature until the CMB is released. And the CMB is emitted with this uniform temperature as well, even though it seems to come from a patch which is too large to have ever mixed and settled down. We can explain this pictorially with something called a conformal diagram. Take a look at this picture, which represents the entire history of the universe. I know, impressive for one little sketch. You can think of these lines as representing areas that have had time to interact with each other. So the parts of the universe that are here and here are connected, but here and here are not connected because they're too far away to have interacted yet. So as we go back in time, which means going downwards here, the insides of these past light cones represent areas that are in causal contact. This means before the CMB is released, we can expect each cone to be a certain temperature, but different cones can be different temperatures. In the standard history shown here, the universe would be made up of many cones when the CMB is released, meaning it should not be one uniform temperature. However, this second version shows you the story if inflation is involved. Here, there is much more time for all of the past light cones to interact. Overlapping past light cones means interaction and mixing, allowing for their temperatures to become uniform. If we look at these two points on the CMB, which are as far away as any two points we could see since they're on the edge of our past light cone, we see that in the past, the light cones of these two points overlapped due to inflation. This means each of these points come from patches that have had time to mix and interact and equilibrate, meaning we would expect them to be the same temperature, exactly as we see in the CMB. I should note that the distances here aren't really to scale. From here to here, the Big Bang to inflation takes a fraction of a second. The end of inflation to the release of the CMB is about 380,000 years, and the release of the CMB to today, well that's another 13 point something billion years. It's not too important, but just something to keep in mind. I should also say that if you're just happy to assume that the universe has always been a uniform temperature from the very beginning, either by grand design or by cosmic luck, then the horizon problem isn't a problem and you don't need inflation to explain it. However, most physicists don't like this explanation because there doesn't seem to be any reason why that would be the case. This is called a fine-tuning problem, which means that we don't like to choose a very specific initial condition, in this case a uniform temperature across the whole universe, unless we have a good reason. And here, we simply don't have a good reason to do that yet. Stick around here for explanations of how inflation solves the other two problems with the Big Bang model, the flatness problem and the monopole problem, but until then, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!